I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Genesis GV eighty three point five T prestige all wheel drive without launch control. Horsepower and torque. 375 horsepower, 391 pound feet of torque from a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. And before we keep going, if you like our videos, consider subscribing because hitting the subscribe button in 2020 is kind of like hitting a like button in 2015. Yeah, it has the same impact. You don't get notifications unless you hit the bell and it just shows that the channel is good. Hit the bell too though. Or at least likable. So what's the deal with the GV80? Why is everyone so excited about it? Well, it's Genesis's first SUV. And this is like a full on competition for BMW and Mercedes and Audi. Spoiler alert, they're exactly competing with them now 100%. Yeah, 100%. There's so much technology packed in here. I think it's also stunningly good looking. There's a lot to talk about with this. Okay, we got to start with the technology. You've already seen some rolling shots. So it's a very open concept kind of feel and every material is very nice to the touch. Yeah, this beige on blue looks really nice. There's a lot of detail with like knurling and like crystal elements and stuff like that. Yeah, like we've got this shifter that looks crazy. Apparently this is like one solid plastic piece. Yeah, and then our infotainment scroll wheel also looks really nice. Our volume control is also the same with this knurling and then our climate control has it. And then it's kind of just like spread out throughout the rest of this interior, including on the turn and the wiper stocks. Okay, but the most important thing is we have a 3D gauge cluster, which sounds like a gimmick. I hate 3D movies. When I go see Avengers, I go see it in 2D. This doesn't hurt my eyes at all. It's just impressive, and while looking at it, I just feel rich. It kind of hurts my eyes, but you can turn it down, and then you can also turn it off, which is really nice, and it's actually really bad for the passenger to look at it, but it's not meant for the passenger. And then when we change our drive modes, every single drive mode has an awesome transition, and every single drive mode has an awesome looking gauge. So we've got Eco, which looks kind of like some Iron Man stuff. Comfort looks like almost steampunk, which I don't really like steampunk stuff. And then if we go to Sport, we get straight up lightsabers that have a glowing effect with the lightsaber glowing the whole time if you look really close. It does look really, really cool. And then Canada exclusive America, sorry you don't get this stuff. We also have terrain modes, snow, mud, and sand. No, we don't get any different graphics for that. No. And then we also have the little car in the middle, which means we have highway driving assist in this, which is a better lane keep system than Tesla, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi as far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned as well, and this is Highway Driving Assist 2, which now can change lanes for you. Yes, and to do that, you need to turn the signal halfway down, but you need to keep your hands on the wheel the whole time, and then it'll move. So it's not like click it and let the wheel do everything itself. Which makes sense. And just like BMW, it does have a sensor that looks at your eyes, so it does notice when you look away and it will notify you. Which is also the sensor that runs the 3D stuff. Yeah. And if we're comparing this to BMW, Audi, and Mercedes, BMW still has the rotary wheel. Mercedes got rid of it and they put in a touchpad and a touchscreen. BMW also has a touchscreen. And then Audi went full touchscreens. This has a rotary wheel that also has a touchpad in the middle and a touchscreen. It's pretty easy to use. It's a tiny bit confusing, a little bit of a learning curve, pretty much as much of a learning curve as BMW and Mercedes now. Yeah, if you imagine the regular rotary wheel, if it was lifted, it's a little bit different because it kind of feels like an iPod touch of the previous generation, but I find my finger slips off of it a lot, so I don't really like it, but I like using the touchscreen. Yeah, and they let you click up, down, left, and right on this outer ring that spins around, and it controls this amazing, super wide, infotainment screen. Yeah, it's super wide, like ultra wide. Okay, when you're in the home screen with nothing on it, it just shows you the weather that's going on outside and a really nice picture of the road that you're on without any like names on the roads. So we do have Android Auto, we do have Apple CarPlay. They're both wired, but apparently in the future they may be wireless. And Apple CarPlay is takes, as widescreen as you can get. Yes, takes up the whole screen. And Android Auto is so standard for the widest screen we've had ever. Yeah, it looks pretty bad, but that's Android Auto's fault, not Genesis's fault. Yeah, well, everything's Android Auto's fault. It is. <laughs> okay, and then this widescreen compared to how Ford has tall screens. This is so much better. It really is. 
Like, I don't want a tablet, like an iPad stuck to the screen because this just is more functional. Okay, and then reaching for stuff isn't the most difficult for me even at five foot eight and a half. Like, I complain a lot about reaching for stuff as most of the things you need are on the left side. Yeah, but if you had to reach to the right, that's kind of far for you. Yeah, and just like all Hyundai Kia Genesis products, we do have an awesome 360 camera, so let me show you that real quick. Damn, but that's good. It's pretty good, but the stitching is not fantastic. Like when you get close to stuff, it kind of gets warpy. But what do we have in this one? We have the same thing that Audi and BMW has. It's the 360 augmented reality thing, and it's pretty smooth, but you can't really zoom in or anything, and you can't change the color of the car, but it is a nice step for a luxury thing. It's really nice to have. And then do we have rewinding Sirius XM satellite radio? Of course we do. But we only have 10 channels that let you rewind, and then we still have that same issue that we had in the K5, where if you add a favorite, it'll push other favorites out so you can't get like the perfect 10 favorites to rewind. I actually had to delete two of your favorites so I can get my one channel to rewind. And then to move over, you can either touch to get the rewinding, but what I like is that if I go up to one of the favorites, then I click right, right, and then click to rewind. It's very easy. But that's a lot of steps. For a rotary wheel, not really, because you don't have to look down to do those, but I can also just click at any point. Yeah, I would definitely just touch the screen. And another amazing thing that this does that most of the luxury companies screw up, we have a star button, which lets you go to your iPhone projection. And then I have like a hard button for radio. There's no weird things where you gotta click through menus because in BMWs, you can't actually set up a button that goes right to your iPhone projection. And I have a nice little bonus feature for you. There's another star favorite on your steering wheel in the bottom left corner. So press that right now. Yep. Now you can do passenger talk, which we're talking to the passengers in the back. I, I did see that, but there was nothing to do with projection there. So I'm like, forget it. I'll leave a blank. That's why I did that. So you can yell at your children back there, which is kind of nice because Honda had that as well. All right. Let's briefly mention that this is a three row SUV. Yeah, it's like a cheater three row, but it's nice to have the extra seats if you need them. I definitely don't fit comfortably at six foot one and a half, but I didn't expect to. Yeah, I don't fit comfortably either at five foot eight and a half, but for kids, it's probably great. And all the stuff back there is very luxurious like we actually have like nice buttons to click to open everything back there and the speaker covers and everything are great yeah it's really impressive back there and can we talk about the second yeah, row let's just keep talking about all the cool stuff in okay here. second row has motorized peasant blockers my favorites because i hate peasants outside but baby shades bro you can also recline those back seats like an insane amount and just like have a full-out gangster lean back there yeah it is very nice back there and we also have heated and cooled seats back there which i totally didn't expect and little mirrors that come from the top because it's pure luxury stuff like the rolls royce yes and the 7 Series in the back. And a Bentley Bentayga, and we'll talk about the design in a bit, but it makes sense. So let's continue on with the seats and talk about these front seats. The driver's side has massage. When I move any of the things, it'll pop up onto the screen so you can fine tune, adjust it. But what about the passenger side? There is no massage here, and we also don't have those capacitive touch buttons, so that's where they save money, which kind of sucks. I would expect a massage here. I'm okay not having the capacitive buttons, but... It, mm. it makes sense because this does come at a cheaper price than the competitors. Exactly. But one thing I hate about these seats is that I feel like there's always a pressure point in my spine when I'm wearing just a t-shirt. If I'm wearing a coat and everything, it's better. I don't really like it. I don't really care for the massage in this. It's not a high quality massage as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and I have no issues with these seats. I find them extremely comfortable. And they also have, I think, like seven air cells that if you drive for a long time, it'll automatically start pumping them up just so that you don't get fatigued on a long drive, which is really nice. Sorry, I got to come back here for more buttons and stuff. This is the first time we're doing the new Genesis interior, so there's a lot to go over. There is. Volume knob, tuning knob. We don't have a traditional one, but we have a volume slider and a tuning slider with home, back, and menu buttons here in front of your rotary wheel, which is very nice. And it's not gloss black, so thank you. Okay, there's a lot of nice wood in here. This is actually all blue, it's dark blue. Our Genesis rep said that everything in here that looks like wood is real wood. Anything that looks like leather is real leather. Well, I would hope so at this price point. But it's nice to get that confirmation because when you look at a Lincoln, yes. I'm not 100% convinced. <laughs> and even the Chevy Tahoe and stuff like that. Yeah, GMC, Yukon. Okay, speaking of those cars, they had the head-up displays that were way too big that I hated, right? Yes. This has the perfect size head-up display with the perfect amount of information. When you're using it for highway driving assist, the amount of information you get is spectacular. Let's get through the regular test. Cup holders. Fits a small cup just fine. Visors. Three, two, one. Yes. Ooh, those, those feel nice. Box test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes.
a lot of room and when you have the third row all the way up you can actually fit a carry-on if you have it angled the other way and you can fold down all of those seats electronically and bring the third row back up electronically which is really nice okay moving back up to the front area I love the design of this steering wheel. I think it looks super cool. I know you hate weird pronged wheels. Yeah, but this one just kind of looks so cool that I'm willing to accept it, but I just like three prong wheels. And then as for the buttons on here, yeah, some of the buttons are kind of weird, but the main ones you use, your volume and your tuning knob, they're just up and down slider slash buttons on the left and right. It's very easy to use. And the paddles feel really good as well. Yeah, and they actually respond pretty quick and you get really cool animations that move when you downshift, downshift, downshift. How about that pumped in audio? Yeah. We'll, we'll save that for when you're driving. We'll get to that. And to end off the interior, I have two more things I want to talk about. We have these nice little knee cushions here on the right. I and love left. them. How nice is that? And then we also have interior lighting in here, which you get the normal colors. You don't have anything like Mercedes with red moon where multicolor and crazy stuff. But I think they did a really good job of imitating a couple year old E-Class. Yeah, that's fair. All right, your turn to drive. Traction and stability off, launch. Decently quick, not the fastest, but it also doesn't have like an AMG or an M badge, so I'm also not expecting it to be the fastest. So would this be equivalent to BMW's 40i? I don't think so, because if it had an M40i in front of it, which it does. So this is slightly below 40i in speed and 43 in speed. Yes, and they're not badging it for that, which is why I'm totally fine with it. If they put a sport badge on this and then they kind of went with that and they tried to put like an N badge on it, then I'd be a little upset. I think it's smart that they start with luxury and then they'll add speed later. Exactly. So now let's talk about this pumped in audio. I don't think it sounds very good. No, but you can turn it off in the settings or you can change it to a different mode or match the drive mode. So let's put it to eco. Still pretty loud, but it's still fully on in the settings. When you turn it off, it sounds a lot better. So I'd actually recommend fully turning it off. What's the next thing you want to talk about today, Jacob? Eight-speed transmission. Shifts pretty quick and pretty smooth. And like you said earlier, the paddles actually respond really nicely. So and I have no issues with the powertrain. And the needle moves quickly. Yeah. This or the MDX trans... I'm just kidding. Ah, we're not going to go there. No, we're not. <laughs> so now let's talk about the suspension, which is unreal. You put this thing in comfort mode, and I think that's really where you should leave it because it's so comfortable in comfort mode. Yeah, very, very comfortable. Now, it doesn't have air suspension, but I think the damping and everything they've done with it is very good because this also has road preview. So just like Rolls-Royce and stuff like that, it does have a camera up top that looks at the road and adjusts the suspension accordingly, which is really nice. I haven't noticed it working but I also haven't noticed it not working. Exactly, which is <laughs> always a compliment to the system. And then this also has a system that reduces road noise inside the cabin, right? Yeah, so it's dead quiet in here. It actually has microphones that pick up the outside audio and then does a reverse frequency and pumps it in here. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Crazy. It's quiet. Yeah. And then this also has a really good audio system. Yeah, like the sound system is really the, good. The speakers, yeah. <laughs> yes, very good. But you can change it to like audience, stage, and normal but i don't find much of a difference like i would in a volvo where the difference really makes a difference yeah volvos are pretty epic so now let's let the car road preview into cliche corner for a full luxurious send and it definitely cuts power a little bit here and there but i kind of expect it to and it's still really it feels really good there's not as much body roll as i would expect and this is an all-wheel drive system but it's heavily rear biased which is really nice the whole time I was driving this, the only time I floored it and went into paddle mode was to test out that I could floor it and mess with the paddles. I've had so much comfort while driving here that I haven't had the need, haven't had the need for speed. Exactly. However, this has been tuned on the Nürburgring. So, you know, there's that Albert Bierman. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. And even though we don't have air suspension, this can actually wade through half a meter of water. So you can go off road with this because we also have the terrain modes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anyone to actually take this into half a meter of water, but apparently you can do that. And one thing that I have to nitpick because this car is actually so good is that I find some of the vibrations of the engine translate through the steering wheel, like just a little bit sometimes where it doesn't in like a BMW or a Mercedes. Yeah, I can't see what you're talking about. It's definitely not a deal breaker. It's just something that I noticed. And the other thing I noticed with the steering is that you actually have to give it not a lot of effort, but you do have to physically move it a lot for the car to turn. More than you'd want to? Yeah, so like in a parking lot and stuff, you're kind of, you're moving your arms more than you normally would. Okay, but what if you're in a parking lot 
and the space is tight and you can't get your car out. Does this have smart pack? Oh, obviously it does. It can actually go forward and back with the key fob, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it works just like the Hyundais do, so that's awesome to have. But we don't have any actual self-parking here, which is kind of weird. Have any Hyundais ever had self park I don't think they ever have yet. No, but I guess... Like BMWs and cool stuff like that. Genesis, you know, it's Genesis. But they still, haven't, they still haven't had it yet. Yeah. Hey, so we're actually in the G80 right now, and turns out this and the GV80 both have automatic parking. You just have to hold down the parking camera button instead of just clicking it, and you can even have the car and SUV park itself from outside if you set it up inside. Hello from the future. Amendment. Also, this thing is glass, not plastic. While we're talking about nitpicks, you know what I don't like that this does not have, that BMW has? No. That dash cam recorder. Yeah, so in the press footage for this car, I believe some markets actually get a dash cam recorder, but not us in Canada. And I don't know about the States, probably not. Probably just Korea or something like that. No, what the heck? Yeah, it's a cool feature. <laughs> so that's probably it for the actual technologies and functions and everything like that. Let's get to the super superficial stuff, the looks. Okay, wait, first climate controls. Oh. It's touchscreen and a couple of knobs and stuff. Do you hate it or not? No, I really like it. It's kind of like the BMW system in the 7 Series, but it actually works very well here. They made it work all right, considering how much is touch. Back to the outside for the first time. Front end. We Love it. <laughs> okay, we got the new style Genesis grill. So it's not like the G70 we drove before. It's like the new one that's coming out, but like the G90 we drove recently. Yes, so Genesis has hired many designers who have had very much experience with German luxury brands, such as the Bentley Bentayga, also the Lamborghini Murcielago, which is pretty epic, and the refresh of the Camaro when they brought it back in 2010. Is that why it looks so good? Yes, it's also why I think it looks like a Bentley Bentayga, and this is kind of a budget Bentley Bentayga. Oh, uh, title in, of our video. Yeah, yeah, in the best way possible, though. <laughs> okay, the front grille, I think it looks great. It's the crest. And then the wings of the crest are the headlights. That's what they tell us, which kind of makes sense. The thing is, on this SUV, it's the first Genesis we've had that doesn't have that radar put in the middle of the grill. The radar is below that. Yeah, and I've complained about that in every Genesis review and other brands as well. But the reason for that is because this is an SUV, they're able to put it lower. So they wanted to get rid of it before, but functionally they couldn't. Because if you drive where there's snow, the snow will get on it if it's too low. But I kind of miss it. I feel like that's part of the Genesis badge. No. And I kind of wish it had it, but this oh, God, is no. very chromed out. And I think I like every Genesis that has a darker grill more. And I really like these headlights. This is Genesis' new thing. It's got two lines and Genesis is gonna be known for two lines. That's what they've said. Yeah, and it looks really good, no complaints. And coming around to the side, you see the two line motif again through everything on the side, which is really cool. Okay, body lines of this are very nice, very strong. The way the window frame goes up at the back, there's nothing awkward about it and it looks like pointy and fast. And it kind of reminds me of the aviator in the profile a little bit. But more, but stronger. Yes. Like musclier. That's right. Where the aviator is like longer and sleeker. That's right. And the pattern that they have everywhere is called the G matrix and you can really see it in the wheels, which are five spoke 22s and they look awesome. It is pretty cool, but I kind of wish that pattern was blacked out in there. You know what I mean? That would look probably pretty cool. Okay. And then what would be the continental recommended tires for the GV80? The cross contact LX Sport. And then stance wise, it is a little too tall. Yeah, I mean, it is an SUV. It doesn't have air suspension, so I get it, but it'd be pretty cool if you could lower it. And this does have our favorite feature, which is keyless entry, where you just put your hand in, the door will open, and you can just touch to lock it. And you know what's also the best? Yeah. This has soft closed doors. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really find myself ever using them. I force myself to use them where I'm just like extra lazy to close the doors. But, I'm like, yeah, I got soft closed. I get why a rich person would have it in case they like didn't close it all the way. They're like, oh, now I got to do it again. Yeah, you know? my $100 bills are going to fly out. So now moving on to the back end, we still have those two line taillights. Yeah, they look really good back there. The overall back end is pretty sharp. And my favorite part is the Crest exhausts. Yeah, so they're also the same shape as the grill. That's pretty much Genesis's thing is we're gonna have Crest shapes and lines everywhere. So it is fake exhaust, it is 2020 real, but the way that they did it makes sense. Yeah, I like that it says Genesis along the back of the trunk lid. And a funny thing that we noticed is that it no longer says H-Track, which was their all wheel drive, it just says AWD or 4WD, it's kind of, it looks like both. It's a combination of both, just like my Element has, which is good because H-Track was stupid. Yes. Or like the name was stupid. It I'm was, sure it handled perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. The badge was stupid. Yeah, it wasn't cool. And I really like the shape of the spoiler at the back and how it comes down, in, out. It's just very sharp lines. Overall, this is one of my favorite looking SUVs, especially for the price. Yeah, 100%. They're definitely as good looking as comparable BMWs, Mercedes, and Audis now. And 
non-comparable Bentley. <laughs> yeah. Not that we've driven one or anything. No, no. Just looks-wise. Yeah. And the color on this is dark. Most of the colors for the GV80 are dark and pop in certain lighting conditions. Not really a fan of that, but it does look good. They're like cliche luxury colors. With a little bit more tang to them. Yes. So I think that's pretty much it with the GV80. Let's get to the price. The least expensive version of this that you can get with a two and a half liter turbo starts at $64,500. Canadian. And this one is $85,000 all in. So not every version can have three rows. That's right. And then all wheel drive is standard in Canada, but you don't have to get it in the States. So you can save yourself a little bit of money if you don't need all wheel drive. And then Genesis is one of those crazy companies doing online sales only where you go look at the cars at the mall, just like Tesla. Yes. And then they also have like five years of oil changes and maintenance and all that stuff included. So it's a really good price. Yeah, we're not trying to sell you on this. We were just told this information recently. So we're just regurgitating it. <laughs> so looks wise, would you take this or a comparable G GLE, 5 Series, or Q5? Strictly looks wise, Strictly. 100% this. And having one of these on the roads before everyone else is gonna be very cool. Yeah, and even after people get them, people are gonna still think you're rocking a Bentley or something. And no one's gonna make fun of your girl for being big because you're not a BMW. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then interior tech. This or the competition? I personally think I just like the Audi's overall layout, even though it is all touchscreen. I find it to be very functional, not confusing, and I just like the way it looks and everything. I take this for sure over the Mercedes interior, this over the Audi interior. This in BMW, I think it's more of a tie. And then when we're talking about features and stuff, I definitely like this 3D gauge cluster more but I wish I had the dash cam stuff. And then I do like how in Mercedes you'll get tune mix with Sirius XM satellite radio. I like how you have hard buttons in the BMWs for like one to eight so you could do shortcuts that this doesn't have. And the way the lane keep assist, the highway driving assist and all that kind of stuff work in here compared to the competition, I like how easy it is to enable. I like how it works. So I actually prefer this to all of the competitors in terms of that one feature. Yes, I also agree with that. Okay, let us know what you think of the new GV80. Do they compete exactly with Mercedes, BMW and Audi now? Are they a step below or now a step above? And click on this video of our G90 because that's the last Genesis that we reviewed before this one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even the G80 too, because we're going to do the G80. That was a virtual review, bro. No, we're doing the real one, like next week. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that might actually already be out. <laughs>